And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Satisfactory. I am Dennis. I am the Paleo Gamer, and with luck today, we're going to finally get that coal plant that I keep talking about set up. Now, a few things have happened while I was between games. Uh, the main thing that I did was I went out and I, um, yeah, got to start with my coffee. There we are. All right. The main thing I did was I went out and got a whole bunch of um, biomass and set up my biomass burner so they should be able to continue to support us for about an hour or so going forward. Um, while I was doing that, I actually wound up picking up some um, Caterium because there was a Caterium outcrop there and if you hit E over an outcrop you harvest the material and I hadn't intended to do that except on stream here but here we are why is that not doing that there it goes the metal has been named Caterium after fix its greatest CEO Katarina Parks it has been added as a viable alternative to gold in industrial applications, specifically in advanced electronics due to its superconductivity, malleability, and corrosion resistance. Alright, I'm going to also have to pick up a few new items to set up the coal plant. I have kind of a standard coal plant I've learned how to build over the past few versions. And there's a few things I'm going to need to have it for it. I'm going to need to get the... Um, pipeline floor hole and the pipeline wall attachment because that also lets me create um, ceiling mounts. Um, not sure why but you have to have that. Um, nothing new here yet that we need. Um, I am going to get concrete foundation material because that will actually let me build foundations using just concrete and not need iron plates just in case I run out don't need anything here yet um, I will get conveyor walls and I think that takes me to my as far as I can get at this point yep I have 11 and that's um, what I have so we should now be able to get started and it has gotten getting dark but that's okay. Just to show you what I did do over here with my um, power grid. And I am going to show you a few more things I discovered, and but we'll have to worry about them later. Um, see, I added a second tier to my, um, or a second container to my input here. And as you can see, I'm already getting lower on biomass leaves. And that's ticking down a few a second. So these things maybe last five or six minutes a piece. Now I've got like 50 of them. So that should last a couple of hours. But things are still fading faster than I would really like for them. Or going down faster than I would really like for them. And I told you I cleared out a bunch of leaves and all to get all this stuff well that was up here near where the um, space elevator is and as you can see this area looks a lot less like a forested brushy area and now more like somebody's lawn but the reason I wanted to come back up here is because I discovered something over here this little fairy circle of mushrooms here has something in the middle. And I can't get in there, so I'm going to have to cut them down. The fruit of this fungus-like flora does not seem to show much potential for use. However, its mycelial network is worth further investigation. Research it in the MAM to establish classification and potential application. Okay, I'll get right on that, Ada. But because I want to pick up this thing. The 
The Summer Sloop was named after Marie Somerville, co-founder of Fix-It and head of its R&D department. There are many theories about the origin of this shape and why this symbol mathematically resembling a Mobius strip has found its way to both human and extraterrestrial culture. Thankfully you don't need to know any of these theories to be a pioneer. Research it in the MAM to establish locally appropriate classification and application. Fun fact. The planet you are on was found and named during a planet spotting event Marie hosted named, Marie's awesome scientific search of the avant-garde exoplanets. Yeah, they like their awesome phrase, and they also um, like to tell you how unimportant you are. Um, I just came over here because we are at the edge of the northern forest here. That over there is actually the Dune Desert. So that shows you how far to the east we are. However, we need to go west because there's stuff over there. So what I want to do is run back to my base area and then we're going to hand, kind of head west northwest from my concrete factory here. Now there is kind of a, it's not so much a path, but there's kind of a less dense area heading up this way and that kind of will guide, you, guide us to where we want to go. Uh, there's some fart plants over there, but we're going to ignore them. And also, if we go up to the right some more from here, there are there's another summer sloop and another Mercer Sphere I found up there. And a couple more ore outcroppings. There is one node I'm going to be using later. Uh, it has four pure iron nodes and two pure copper nodes in the area and a limestone node, although I can't remember exactly what the limestone's purity is. It's getting kind of dark down here, but it is, um, that's where I'm going to set up my second factory once we get there. For now, we just kind of need to be angling to the west and a bit north of west. Uh, that area I was just telling you about is actually right there. Um, and oh look, here's some more plant, more hogs, and a power star. One down. There's the other one. I hear it. Ah, there. Where? Big one. When I get back, we'll have enough, um, we'll have picked up enough um, alien protein that we can actually get the um, rebar gun, which will mean we're not quite as dependent on getting up close and personal with these things. I need to start, I'm wrenching too hard to the south, I need to start turning more to the north, or I'm going to hit a spot I can't get out of. I did find that that hard way. Okay, looks like we're okay. Now, it looks like I'm coming up on the end of the world here. It's a false summit right here. There's also a one of the big hogs up here, so let me start it on him. Ouch. Got him. Yeah, you need to get that guy before he... Um, starts up. See, that's really not a summit. That's a, just the top of a hill. And we are now have left the northern forest, and I think this is called the Central Desert or something like that. I forget. Um, now, we're going to have to deal with a few more other things here. Um, now, one of the problems we're going to have is we've got hatchers all over the place here, and we're going to have to take care of them. So let's see if we can get it before it hatches. Looks like we did. How? Okay. Samples of unknown alien species acquired. It is unclear where on the flora or fauna spectrum it lies, but initial data suggests this might be a nest or an egg. Research the remains in the MAM to establish classification and potential countermeasures. Okay. 
We've also found another thing here we haven't found before. Oh, there's some more right here, over here. Potential edible collected. Eating it and surviving does not count as a valid field test and does not generate enough data for Fixit to make an informed decision. Research it in the MAM to establish classification and potential application. And let me take out these guys while I'm here. Otherwise, we're going to keep running into them every time we run past here. And pick up the power slug while we're here. Now, things will continue to respawn. Our critters will respawn in the game unless you build something there. So I'm going to throw a bam down here. Just so we can research that stuff we just found. That would pre will prevent those two hatchers from respawning. Uh, we now have a hatcher. We can research. The remains researched belong to a plant-like organism hosting the larva of the flying crab, the most mature of which hatch when threatened. Hatcher remains can now be made into alien protein, and additional research may reveal options for improving pioneer safety during exploration. Okay, we found a summer sloop earlier, remember? Summer sloop analysis completed. Summer sloops are somewhere between battery and conduit, harvesting energy from pockets of space with complete disregard for the rules of the space-time continuum and distributing it into its connected ecosystem. This energy, Loving energies harvest until the waves reach our shores. Consume. Similarities to the hypothetical force of dark energy to potentially be one and the same. It can now be tracked by the object scanner. Okay, I do want to know who that voice that keeps showing up is. We harvested a bunch of these, if you remember. The mycelial networks of these fungi possess unusually resilient hyphae, which show potential for making a strong but lightweight natural fabric. Additionally, it has similar medicinal and pest control applications to mycelia on Earth. Okay, and finally, we did pick up these, finally. Why is that? There it goes. This fruit, dubbed the barrel nut after its distinctive color, is compatible with the human digestive system and has been added to the object scanner. Further research is available. Yeah, what we have here is a nutritional processor, which will help us heal when we get hurt. Uh, we don't have steel pipes yet, so we can't go down, further down that path. All right, this is where we are now. So let's go back down the direction we were going. Because down here are coal veins. There are a total of four of them down here. The first two are up front. And we've got hogs here. Hi. Oh, there's a third one. I thought there were two. Okay. Hi. Where'd you go? we got them. Okay. And I realized I don't have something I need. Ha. Okay, let me clear some space here. Because we're going to have to build something right here. We're going to plop down a um, equipment manufacturer here, or equipment workshop. So I'm going to need that. And I think I'm going to add a crafting bench here too, just in case we need that. So. But this is because I forgot to pick up any portable miners. And I need four. Okay. 
Okay. Right now, I'm just going to plop two of them down here. This is a normal coal mine. Or normal coal vein. But I'm going to need some coal in a little bit for when I get started. So we're just going to set those down and let them loose. We're just going to set those down and let them start doing the coal things. This is our third coal vein here. So. I keep doing that. And this is our fourth one over here. Now, I'm going to start by clearing some space. And I will need some biopass in a minute. Because we're going to have to... Um, kickstart the coal veins. No, the coal plant. It'll become self-sufficient fairly quickly, but at first it's not going to do anything. And I'm just going to throw some... Oops. I'm just going to throw some um, foundations here. Stat properly. And I want this to face east, so we're going to put a, um, we're going to put a miner here. What does it say I'm missing a portable miner? Didn't I have, didn't I build four? Oh, it's in my hand. And it, oh, it won't pick it up from my hand? That's interesting. I had never realized that before. Okay. Now, I'm going to extend straight east from here. Unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff in the way, and I like to be clean. So, let's just um, get us a clear area. Hi guys, sorry to bother you, but yeah, that guy never even got at me. Okay. We should be clear for now. And I'm going to start from this spot here, and I'm just going to extend straight outward. This is going to be the basis of our upcoming our And for the next few minutes, we're just going to be building a lot of foundations. That's why I have so many thousands of things there. Hatcher and a yellow power slug there. And it looks like the hatcher found me. Yeah, oh. Fine. I would have left y'all alone, but no, you had to. leave me alone. Bother me. Okay. okay. So we'll get this guy while I'm here. Okay. And the foundations here will prevent that from respawning.
yet. Yep, looks like we are. Okay. Now there is a um, crash pod over there with a hard drive in it, but that's a really tough boar that's walking around. So I'm going to ignore that for a while. Instead, I'm going to run out about three, four, 15 things. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Close enough. Okay. Yeah, we'll just go right here. And I'm going to put, we're going to go out 10, and I want a width of 7, so I need 3 on either side. Like I said, this is a um, design I've used before for my coal plants. I found it works very well, so I use it everywhere. So, one, two, three, four, this is the middle. I need to go up two levels, and the best way to do that is to start by putting a ramp. Oops. And my upper level I'm going to want to be 11 wide. So I need 5 on either side. There's 1. Now, I want my plant to be basically on these two squares. And I'm going to skip this first part here, and I'm going to build my plant here. And this is where my coal plant is going to be. And I want it to... It's a little dark, so I'm having trouble to see it. I kind of want it so it... Um, actually, I need a little forward from that. I've got it too far back. I think that's about where I want it. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So let's put that here. Interesting. Most pioneers already had coal power set up by this point because they understood their responsibility to humanity. Adjusting pioneer attitude metrics. Reminder, coal power generators require coal. Yeah, Ada. Um, once again, I just kind of like the way they keep reminding you that they really don't care about you at all. The reason I'm building four here is because we're on a pure node over there. Or not a pure node. That's a normal node. So it's only going to be reducing 60 per minute. These each take 15 per minute from coal. Wherever it... Anyway, it only takes 15 per minute. And... Um, we don't have 15 per minute. So 4 times 15 will give us what we need. Now I'm going to add a few things to my taskbar here because I'm going to need these soon. I need a conveyor lift floor hole that I'm going to drop here. But I'm going to add it to my um, hot bar and the pipeline floor hole. Then I'm going to add a pipeline and a lift one. Because that's the minimum I'm going to be needing right now. I'm also going to be needing a belt and a splitter. So we're going to add those to this just because it'll make building our coal plant faster. And we'll plop a pipeline hole here. In each of these places.
Fix-it pipelines can contain any fluid, including the water necessary for coal-powered generators. Note, water does not flow upwards by itself. While water extractors provide some lift to truly defy gravity, consider the use of pipeline pumps. All right, we're almost done here. The last thing we need to do is set up some where our power grid is going to be. Because all of these guys are going to need power. Well, they won't need power, they're going to be producing power. But they won't work unless they're on a grid. Now then, I want to make this far enough out that I can put another two coal generators here. So I need three to four more rows to do this. And the reason I want to do that because one will be sitting here. This is for future expansion, but it helps me locate where to put something. And also right now, I'm going to take this down and this down. We're going to replace those with something else. Now that I'm down here, you can see where things are going to be. And this is our center path here. So I'm going to go back to my this, and this is where our splitters are going to come in. We're going to attach the other end of our lips here. And I can get away with all of our coin belts right now because, again, we're only producing 60 coal a minute. Now then, I'm going to want my coal to be flowing. And I'm going to need my access up there again, so I'm going to flip to this. way back here and we're going to start getting coal brought in. Where did you come from? You weren't there before, were you? Well, hell. Ow. Okay. Oh, you're a tougher one. Is that the big one that was up there? Man! I think that was the big one that was up near the... Um, hard drive. Maybe I should run up there while he's dead. Sorry, got distracted here. See if that was him. Nope, he's still up there. Huh. Don't know where that guy came from. 
but let's go back to where we were, which was about to set up the whole factory. Coal vine. Oh shoot. Shoot. This is how we're going to get our coal up to our plant. And remember, this can only be a length of seven foundations. And there we go. That will now happily be feeding our power grid. Now, one thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to bring power down. So I'm just going to run this as far as I can. Which we'll say is yeah, it's not exactly right, but. This just because at some point I'm going to be using some power over there. All right. In the meantime, uh, that's going to bother me if I don't fix it. In the meantime, I'm going to build a pair of biomass burners over here. They don't need to be automated. They're not going to be running that long, but I'm going to need to. And I'll just connect both of them to this pole here. Go in. See, so I have plenty of biomass. Split that and give each of them half of it. I can make more if I need to, or I could just run them on leaves if I want to, because they're not going to be burning that much. But this will get the pop coal plant started. Or rather, it will get the coal plant started when I actually connect the coal plant. There. So this will cause coal to start flowing into the network. While that's doing that, I'm going to go back to my other coal sites here, and I'm going to grab some coal. Remember I left those miners sitting on them. And I'm doing this to kind of jump start my coal plants because they're going to start running in a few minutes as soon as I start supplying them with water which is next on our list you see my coal has only made it down to here so far but since I got this set up as a manifold down below it's going to be mostly going into the first one first and last to two three and four so we're going to give two, three, and four their own coal. Alright. Now just because it's going to be there later, I'm going to go ahead and put two more of these out. And then one at the very end here. That one at the end is about to become important. Because 
now we have to get the water we're going to need for these coal plants. And I'm going to get it down here. There was that extra one I did earlier. Okay. So we're going to put it here. What I'm going to do is run a catwalk out. Then we're going to do a water extractor, and we're going to put it, oh that's right, I have to extend this, don't I? I didn't extend down here as far as I did up there. So these have to be lined up with each other, so that's my fault. fill in the other side later. But it's okay. So all I have to do now is go back to what I was doing. Put a catwalk out a couple of steps so I can get out to this plant. Then we're to build a water extractor. Put it oh, right here. That may indeed be water. Try submerging your arm. If it does not dissolve, that will narrow down the range of possibilities. Or you could just pipe it to a coal powered generator and see what happens. That's my plan. Now I'm going to overclock this. This thing produces 120 cubic meters of water per minute. Each of my coal plants back there needs 45 cubic meters and I've got four of them. So that's going to be a total of 180 cubic meters it'll need. If I completely overclock this to 150 percent, oh look, it's now giving me 180 cubic meters. So this can easily feed the four coal plants I just started. Now later I'm going to, exp this can, once we get Mark III miners, I'll be producing 180 coal per minute, which means I will be able to feed 12 miners. That's what those two extra spaces up there for. That's two more on this side and a total of six on the other side for 12 miners. This guy will then need to have 225, or need more, um, even more water. He'll need 270 cubic meters at that point. 235? It's more than he's got. Another 90. 270. Correct. So I can overclock this thing to 225% and it would still be producing enough water for all six. And this way I can use one water extractor for six coal generators. All I need to do now is turn it on. Now then, now I just need to get the water into all of these plants. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect this up to more or less straight. Let's just connect you up to here. Ah, we'll put you in the middle. How about that? And then we're going to run this as far straight as I can. Now, he's going to not reach the whole way because, you know, these things only have a maximum length. Doesn't really want to be in the center, does he? Can run you just short of this guy, which is right here. Then I'm just going to connect you. Now then, that's now feeding our first coal plant. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to need a splitter or a junction. Put one here, directly in line with that. One here in line with that. Okay. 
hand went here in line with that. I think one of my coal plants is a little out of line, but oh well. And then we just connect all these up. Now all of these should be running because there was power coming in from the biomass burners. Uh, pipelines are a little different from belts. Pipelines don't exactly have manifold or load balancers. It's just that power plants all have um, Basically, the whole piping network has the same pressure in it. So we should see things start starting soon. Don't have any water in this guy yet. Okay, up there's water starting to appear. Okay, I hear it coming. Tell when stuff starts because they'll start smoking. And there we go. See, the water in the system is slowly building up. It will take a little bit for all of them to come up to full. Notice we are now getting power. Okay, the all achieving steady state. It looks like they might be. See how our water supply is looking. Yeah, you see he's almost filled up. He's slowly filling up. Okay, they're slowly getting there. We have to wait for them to fill up the back. Since this is where the... Um... Okay, see, he's already full now. And he's starting, you see, he's starting to continually get more than he's burning. So the whole grid should start filling up soon. Okay, since we don't need them anymore, since we're now generating hopefully enough power, we're going to take both these biomass burners offline. And hopefully that didn't blow a fuse. Because we should be having enough power now. There's always a little touch and go when these things first cut on because you wait for the water to the system to fill up with water. But it looks like we're there now. See, it looks like we're holding a steady state at 300 megawatts now. slowly. It'll take a while for the whole water grid to fill up, but it looks like we're slowly getting there. So, I'm going to... and I can make it fill up faster by um, overclocking that a bit further for right now, but I don't think that's going to be a major issue. But, 
we now have a coal plant up and running, which is producing basically the same amount of power as all our biomass burners over there, which means we're still going to need more power. Fortunately, there's another coal node right there, and we're going to do the same thing we did here over there. So we'll have 600 megawatts going, and that should let us run our original factory and get our steel plant started up. I want to use the coal nodes that are way back there, and there's an iron node up on the top of this, and we'll get steel started over there. There's a concrete node over here and a copper node up there. That's a copper node you can see. Those will let me produce wire and concrete so I can make encased industrial beams and rotors. And that should be everything we need to get moving forward again. So I'm going to just stop it here while I wait for my power plants to reach steady state. In the meantime, I am Dennis. I am the Paleo Gamer, and we have been playing Satisfactory. I will see you next time.